Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we're going to be going through new and coming soon releases. So some of these items, like the YSL quads, have been released in other countries, and we're gonna go through which ones I plan on picking up. We're gonna take a look at the new Clay de Po quad, Suku, Givenchy, and so forth. So we've got a lot of great releases. You know, I feel like the uh, new and upcoming releases have been kind of blah recently, but that's changing. So I'm very excited for a lot that we're gonna talk about today. But first, I've had a lot of requests for some updates on Sadie, our little Shiba Inu puppy. She is sesame coloring and you know, she looks like a little squirrel, so a little squirrel colored fox. So let me just give you a brief update. I'll have a few little clips of her playing kind of to the side that you can see if you are interested. And, you know, basically she is in that teething phase right now where she is biting nonstop. You know, she's always trying to chew on people. She's obviously, you know, she's a puppy. She's learning. She's not doing it maliciously or anything, but, you know, she's definitely very bitey right now. And so we've been going through tons and tons of teething toys and just trying to keep her occupied on appropriate things to chew. She is super fast, very curious. She has just started doing the stairs. So she has been able to go upstairs and uh, she's been, she, she hasn't really been able to go down. Like she could go down like one or two without falling until yesterday. Now she's going up and down the stairs all the time. And I've had to put gates everywhere just to kind of prevent her from going places when I don't want her to. So her favorite thing to do, I have, um, my bed is one of those beds with storage underneath, like the drawers. So there's a very tight, tiny gap underneath. And so she can get there from going behind the bed and getting underneath and then sitting under the drawers, but then she can't come out through the side. So she really likes to do that. <laughs> and so that, that's been kind of, um, you know, as soon as she gets to my room, if you know, if she is not being held or carried at that time, she bolts right under there. She thinks it is the most fun game to have everybody try and get her out. So she does come out with bribery. But uh, yeah, so that's that's basically what she's trying to do all the time now is things like that. And, uh, you know, she's into everything super cute and you know we are just so thankful to have her she is you know pretty well trained so far you know for basics you know like she can do sit down although she doesn't listen to that so well yet uh sh she'll do it for a treat but if you're just saying it uh she'll, she'll do it if she wants to <laughs> so we're still working on that you know so she, the basics though like sit and come she can do very well you know she doesn't really have accents in the house or anything so all of that is going very well and she is sleeping through the night but getting up super early and yeah you know overall just very happy to have her so uh you know again as always feel free to send any like toy or treat recommendations you know we've been going through a ton of those like rawhide free chew sticks and knots and things like that. So yeah, very, very, very happy to have her. So let's go ahead and move on to our new and upcoming releases. And you know, let's start off with the clay to po quads. Now I am putting uh, timestamps on here. I always have timestamps on my videos. I have noticed occasionally um, YouTube doesn't upload them properly. So, you know, just note if you don't see timestamps on a video, check the description box and they will have the timestamps in there. And we're gonna start off with the clay to poke quads. If you're not interested in these, feel free to skip ahead to the next timestamp. So clay to poe has finally redesigned their quads and so we're gonna have new packaging for these. You know, the previous quads, we had the four shades kind of all in one horizontal row together. Now we actually have a two by two quad. So it will have new packaging, new formula. And I have to say, they look stunning. I love Clay de Poe eyeshadow formulas. Now, some of the holiday ones have been like a little bit light, maybe not quite as great as all of the permanent ones in the past, but you know, in general, the permanent ones, they've always been a very silky smooth powder. They are pretty soft and these look gorgeous. They also look like they might perhaps be a bit more pigmented than the current 
quads. So let's take a look at these. And I have these pictures are coming from um, Bikicom or Bikicom. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that, but uh, you know, I have. When you see the video, the pictures, I always have the Instagram handle up there at the top if it's from Instagram. So, and I will have all of their information down below in the description box. So definitely if you're on Instagram, give them a follow. So this is, you know, we have 12 different quads coming out and they are actually gonna be coming out mid July here in the US and in Japan. But in the UK, I believe it's, they're not coming till the fall. So just something to note there. Now, I have kind of divided this up into four different groups. I have my I have my primary list of the ones that I absolutely have to get right away. And then I kind of actually took that primary list and I took a couple of those out and made those a secondary. So now my secondary is a tertiary, my tertiary is a quaternary. So uh, my very favorites here, we've got Sand Dune. Now this looks like a beautiful, cool, neutral palette. I mean, you can't go wrong with this one. Now, as we're looking at Sand Dune, you can see we've got these beautiful, you know, soft satin taupe in there. That first shade is a little bit more champagne. The second one looks a little bit more pigmented. Really love that. I love the inclusion of the white in here and the deeper brown and it still looks pretty neutral. So that is going to be a must have quad for me. You know, I think it just looks like the perfect neutral palette if you tend to lean towards cooler tones. However, if you tend to prefer warmer tones, I think number two, Beach Pebbles is the equivalent of that you know and this is has actually gone to my secondary or now tertiary list i think it looks really beautiful for a nice warm equivalent of an everyday neutral palette next we have number three sunrise driftwood and this one kind of reminds me a little bit of one of the the guerlain imperial moon let me get that one out so this one here is Guerlain Imperial Moon. And obviously, let me just swatch this on my hand. You can see that the colors, you know, the color story itself is not going to be identical, but you know, it does, it, I think it's really this fourth shade here. It just kind of brings that whole kind of look together for me. So it does seem similar. Now in the, I'm not sure if this is a t an error, a typo, sun dries driftwood um but you can see that the brown that they have on the bottom is really a reddish brown but then we have kind of this taupey shade that is the second shade and that's that's definitely going to have a little, a little bit more gray so it's kind of replacing this like silvery shade that we have here it's got a little bit more gray a little bit more brown in there we have a very soft petal pink which you know is going to be a little bit cooler in tone than this shade here it's actually more similar to this but in a matte finish it looks like and then we have more of an ivory shade so i think it's just going to be a great you know beautiful palette so that one is actually on my secondary list i i really wanted to be on my primary and it was originally but i had to cut back a little bit so that one you know i think it's gorgeous it also reminds me a little bit of um the tom ford new dip but obviously not so shimmery now number four ocean sunrise this is going to be a warm tone palette and we've got you know kind of this like warm chartreuse shade to start off with it's kind of like a mustardy chartreuse and then we have a really beautiful neutral brown that looks like it leans a little warm, a warm ivory here. You can see that compared to Sundry's Driftwood, this one is gonna have just a touch of like a beige gold hue to it, but it's definitely still an ivory. And then we have, you know, kind of this rich reddish brown shade. So I think that's gonna be a beautiful palette as well, but that is actually gonna be on my quaternary list. So fourth choice there. And then we have number five, Coral Reef. This one, again, I just think this looks like beautiful, you know, everyday, more rosy neutrals. It reminds me of Dior New Dress, which I actually don't have, but that that's what this palette looks like to me. So if you already have that, it might not be necessary for you. But this one does look like these shades are gonna be a bit more matte than some of the others we've looked at. It's hard to tell whether that second shade has a touch of satin in it or not, but it definitely looks like perhaps maybe a satin matte. And the first shade is definitely a matte. 
the third shade looks again like a touch of satin and then we have a matte for the fourth shade so you know again i think these are really beautiful kind of rosy beige neutral shades there so this one is going to be on my tertiary list so um next we move into six caviar pearls this made me think of a suku palette right away you know it just looks like one of, I can't even think if they have a, a Suku palette like this one out there right now, but it reminds me of one from the previous formula, you know, years ago that I used to have. And we've got this beautiful kind of orchid pink purple shade. We have this kind of rosy taupe, definitely cool tone. And then again, we have kind of this champagne ivory and a cooler rich brown. And I just think it is a really beautiful palette. This is on my secondary list. Next, we have number seven, Starlight Splendor. And Starlight Splendor actually looks pretty close to number five, Coral Reef, to me. So we do have a few differences. It looks like the first shade is a satin in Starlight Splendor, whereas it is a matte in Coral Reef. And it also looks like perhaps there's a little bit more pink in the Starlight Splendor. And then our second shade looks to be slightly warmer in Starlight Splendor. And the ivory shade, you know, that they look pretty similar in, in the photos. It's kind of hard to tell. And then our deepest shade here looks a little bit redder and a little bit richer, a little bit deeper in color. But, you know, it kind of looks very similar to Coral Reef. So I actually have both of those on my tertiary list right now. And I think I would just have to kind of decide between the two of them because, you know, one of them I'll have to move to the quaternary list um, because they do look pretty similar in these swatches here. Next, we have number eight, Warm Ocean Sunset. And this is your warm pink palette, you know, kind of your soft, dusty roses. I think it looks beautiful, but it just kind of reminds me of, you know, similar color stories. You know, some of those like rosy palettes we've seen over and over again from like Chanel and Dior and so forth. So I'm not as interested in that one. I'm kind of over these rosy pinks. So to have it as one shade in a quad, you know, I still love that, but to have so many of these rosy shades, I'm just not as interested. You can even see this fourth shade down here. It definitely has a touch of pink to it as well. So it looks like all of these shades actually have a touch of pink. The first shade there, you know, we have kind of this neutral dusty rose, and then a slightly warmer version for the second shade. Even this ivory looks like it has a touch of pink. And then the deeper accent brown shade definitely has like a deep dusty rose vibe to it as well. Moving on, we have nine pink coral shells. And this is essentially the cooler version of number eight, Warm Ocean Sunset. So we have cooler pink. Uh, the second shade here looks like a cooler pink taupe. And then again, we have more of a brighter white with a touch of pink. And then this brown also looks slightly cooler, but again, it looks like there's a, a touch of pink in there. So this is also gonna be on my quaternary list. And then the last three are all on my primary. <laughs> so we have number 10, Seagrass. And you know, right away makes me think of like Dior Jungle or the new Dior Khaki palette. So I definitely will compare those when I get this, but we have these beautiful kind of like olive greens we have a forest green you know the ivory shade here is kind of like a very soft yellowish green you know i just think the whole palette looks gorgeous and i love green eyeshadow definitely gonna get that one and then we have 11 azure blue c and blues can be a little tricky they can look a little frosty they can look a little dated but i think this palette looks fantastic so the second shade here actually reminds me of a very old dior palette i had from many years ago it's not the the last two formulas uh you know and it was one of my favorite shades it's just such a great accent color i think it'll mix very well with these other quads as well particularly the purple shades that frosty light blue makes me think of you know snow or elsa from frozen uh you know that shimmery white with a touch of blue looks gorgeous and then we have a really nice matte navy that's not too deep so i think it's going to blend well give some depth to all of these colors and this is definitely a cool tone palette. I can't wait to try it though. I think it looks gorgeous. And then 
Purple Ocean Twilight, of course. This is definitely a must have. It looks like we have more of a blue based light lavender for the first shade and it looks like it is a satin. And then we have this really beautiful, you know, soft taupe shade and it might have a touch of lavender in there. It's kind of hard to tell in this, the lighting of this picture. And then we have like a warmer um, highlighting shade here. It looks more like a warm ivory and it looks like it's satin shade. And then we have more of a red tone, like plum purple. And I have to say, I'm very, very excited for this one. So uh, just, you know, I'm showing you now a clip. This was taken from Benjamin Pucky's stories. Benjamin Pucky, if you're not familiar with who he is, he is the creative director for Clay de Poe. So he's kind of in charge of all of these reformulations and the color stories and so forth. And so he put this little clip on his stories the other day. So I just recorded it with my phone because it was just such a beautiful, uh, you know, depiction of all of these shadows. And they do have a plastic lid on top. So, you know, it, it does kind of look filtered, but it's just the plastic lid and you can see a little light reflection there, but to see them all at once. So just to go through my list again, the ones that are must haves first off the bat for me, be number one, Sand Dune, number 12, Purple Ocean Twilight. So those will be my very top two, but I also plan on getting 10 seagrass and 11 azure blue sea right away. So those are my top four must haves. And then we're moving into three sunrise or sun dried uh, driftwood and six caviar pearls. And then from there, we're going into two beach pebbles and I'll try and choose between either five coral reef or seven starlight splendor. After that, then we move into four ocean sunrise, eight warm ocean sunset, and nine pink coral shells. So I would love to be able to get all of these, but I'm sure that these will be priced higher than the current offerings. So that's not gonna happen. However, one of the great things about Clay de Po is they do use refillable packaging and you can purchase the refill and the packaging separately. So if it's like the previous ones, I could actually just, you know, get a magnetic palette and save some money on the packaging to get more color stories, which is definitely an option. <laughs> so just something to note there. Now let's go ahead and we're going to move into our next collection here. Let's take a look at Suku Fall. So again, these uh, pictures are from Bikecom. And this is Suku Fall for 2023. I cannot wait for these. And we have, we have a new product here. So at first glance, when I first saw these pictures, I thought these were the treatment wrapping lip glosses that they came out with. But you can see on the bottom right of this photo, these are actually going to be liquid eyeshadow. So my preferences for these, we have shades three, four and 101. So you can see that they kind of have like two different lightings to show you the swatches. So I'm not exactly sure what they'll look like for the most part, but three, four and 101 are definitely my favorites. Um, but honestly, they're all gorgeous. So, you know, one, two, five and 102 <laughs> would also be options. So if you're not familiar with Suku numbering, anything that is below 100 is going to be a permanent item, permanent shade anything 101 and above is limited edition. So um, yeah, I definitely wanna get some of those. And then another new item, we have a Suku eye primer. I'm super excited for this. Uh, I, you know, I can't wait to try this. You can see it's a liquid primer. It's supposed to, you know, be moisturizing, smoothing. I think it's supposed to have a bit of blurring and it's supposed to allow your shadows to adhere a bit more strongly. So there, I think it will be a little tacky. Uh, hard to say so far, I haven't heard that much about it, but I'm definitely excited for the primer. Now, also in this collection, we have two eyeshadow palettes. I think both of these look gorgeous, you know, but honestly for me from this collection, the stars are gonna be the two new items that we just mentioned, but I'll probably pick up both of these palettes. Honestly, the pink shades in this first palette here aren't really calling to me so much until I see that kind of grayish blue and then the idea of mixing those together, that's what I really wanna do. And then I really like the way that they added that gray in with these warmer tone shades in the second palette as well. So, you know, those I just think are gorgeous. We have two of the pure color blushes. 
I think they both look great. I plan on getting those. And then we have three new shades of the Moisture Rich Lipstick. I really like this. This is one of those glossy pigmented lipsticks, very comfortable on the lips. My favorite out of these three shades is 126. So I'll definitely get that one. I don't know if I'll get all three of them like I usually do because I am trying to kind of scale back and use some of my lipsticks. I have been purchasing a lot of lipsticks recently. So, uh, you know, definitely a gorgeous collection. Plan on picking those up. Now for people who are in the UK, you can get their nail polishes. And I think those are stunning, particularly the green, but unfortunately those aren't gonna be ones that we're able to get here. So really another gorgeous collection. And before we move on to another um, brand here, let's actually take a look at some other items coming soon from Suku. So this information here is from WZ Beauty on Instagram and we have the Suku the foundation is being reformulated. You can see the packaging's updated. They're gonna be keeping all 24 of the shades. So that includes the shades that were recently added during the shade expansion last year. So I have to say Suku, when they do reformulations, it's not as scary as when other brands do it because I feel like they actually really do them well. So I have never had an issue with a reformulated product from Suku not being as good or better than a previous version. So I'm not worried about the reformulation and I definitely plan on picking this up and trying it out. I love the Suku cream foundation as it is and the Suku in the in the um, bottle, the foundation now. I think they are both fantastic and yeah, definitely gonna grab that. But I wanted to bring your attention to this loose powder here. So I don't know, there's no information, but is the loose powder being reformulated? Is it going to be the same as the lavender? So not that long ago, Suku came out with this in the Oil Rich Glow Loose Powder and it is lavender, it's shade 101. It was a limited edition really beautiful loose powder. I use this all the time and this powder looks like it might be that. Now you can see on the side of the bottle, it does not say the oil rich glow loose powder like this one does. So, you know, if they've reformulated the powder, that's what it's looking like. Maybe they've added a lavender shade permanently and I really hope so. I know I definitely put in a request to Suku for that. And I know some of you guys also DM Suku requesting a lavender powder becoming permanent. So I'm very optimistic that that's what's happening here. So we'll see, you know, in time, but very excited for that. And of course I'll pick that up and compare it to the one that I have now. So very, very excited for Suku. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the YSL quads. You know, they've been released pretty much everywhere except for here. I've heard from a few of you who already have them, how fantastic the formula is. I can't wait to try these out. I have to say though, I'm not sure which shades are gonna be available here in the US. Uh, so I can't say for sure exactly which ones I'm gonna get, but I definitely want number 100 store dolls. And again, that looks kind of like the first, the sand dune quad from Clay de Poe. It reminds me of that. It reminds me of the Guerlain Imperial Moon. You know, I definitely wanna pick that one up. That's my number one choice from here. And then I think I'll probably also go with 400 Babylon Roses. In some photos it looks more pink and in others it looks more purple. So if it's more purple, I plan on picking it up. If it's definitely more rosy, I probably won't. A lot of these palettes look like they lean pretty warm in this like permanent line that we've been seeing everywhere, but I'm not sure. Palettes 900 and 910, they might be exclusive to France. I have so far only seen them available in France and that's the blue palette and this really beautiful one that reminds me of the Dior, uh, what is that palette called? It's the Black Bow, the Dior Black Bow palette. That's what this 910 palette makes me think of. Mine's actually, it, one of my shades broke, which is unfortunate, it was my fault. But um, yeah, so, you know, if since they don't make that one exactly the same anymore. If this, if I could get the 910, I'd be very happy to get that one. So we'll see. I'm only gonna get them if they come to the US. I'm not gonna be, you know, shelling out a bunch of money to get them from overseas. There's just too much other makeup, so that I try not to do that. But yeah, definitely interested in those. So 100, 900, 910, and then possibly 400. 
Now let's take a look at Guerlain Fall. And this, again, you can actually, I, I could have ordered this from Fude Japan. Um, you know, they, it is available in Japan already. So, you know, and it's been available in a couple other places as well. I think it looks like a great set of neutrals. Um, the lipsticks, you know, we've got new lipsticks. Some of these are gonna be mattes, some of these are satins. Honestly, the satins are calling to me more than the mattes, but there's a good chance I'll pick up all of these or at least at least half. So, you know, I'm always tempted by their lipsticks. I love the Guerlain Rouge G lipsticks. So yeah, I, I might get those. I'll probably pick up the cases, although the cases, I don't think these are special. So I might not, I have to go through. I actually have some really, really old Guerlain Rouge G lipsticks that I need to purge. Um, and these are like really old from before I started YouTube. So, uh, you know, if I have enough cases, then I might not pick these ones up. And then we have the quads, you know, I'm torn on the quads. I think they look like gorgeous neutrals, but with all these other eyeshadows coming out, I'm not a hundred percent sold. I actually think this deeper one is the one that has really, this first one that I'm showing you, this is the one that has kind of called to me in other swatches. Here in these photos, it looks a little bit warmer, a bit more gold. Both of these palettes look like shades I already have. I really like the second palette, this lighter one, except for that yellow shade in there. Like that's a shade that I just know I'm probably not gonna use. And since these palettes are like $90, I don't know if I'm gonna pick those up. Uh, the Guerlain um, Mascara in brown. I believe they came out with this in brown like last year as well and I picked it up then. I like it. I'll probably pick it up again. So um, I might get the whole collection. Uh, it kind of depends when everything comes out because for me, I think the Clay de Poe and the YSL are more of a priority than the Guerlain. So they all come out at the same time. I might need to save some money, but uh, otherwise I'm, I might just get all of them because you know these are just such great everyday shades and I know the formulas are fantastic. Moving on to Dior. So Dior is reformulating their nail polishes now. <laughs> and honestly, they're, they're gonna be 21 shades. I'm not interested. Um, I'm kind of done with these Dior reformulations. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna pass on those. So not super interested in that. So let's go ahead and take a look at Dior Fall while we're at it. And Dior Fall, again, I think I'm gonna pass on these. So the, qua the quince here, you know, we've got a warmer one. We have a, a, it's more neutral. I wouldn't say it's cool. It still leans a little bit warm, it looks like here in these photos. But we have palettes 523 and 683. And I think they look nice. I'm just more interested in the other ones that we're seeing from the other brands. Blush, again, looks nice, um, but more interested in others. And I just haven't been, you know, the new reformulations, they're okay. They're not like the worst thing in the world or anything. They're totally fine, but they're not as good as the old ones. So I'm only gonna be picking up the Dior products that are really, you know, super unique, beautiful color stories that can you know make up for the fact that they're not as good as they used to be so i'm gonna pass on those as well as the two nail polishes which are in 415 and 746 and by the way the blush is 537 and these are set to launch in just a couple days on the 28th oh no i'm sorry july 28th my mistake so these are set to launch at the end of july and this info is from wc beauty so when we talk about Dior, we might as well talk about Chanel. I feel like they kind of go hand in hand. And I have to say, these highlighters, I'm disappointed in them. I would have preferred mini highlighters. They are they have three different highlighter shades, warm gold, pearly white, and precious coral. And you can see those in these swatches here from WZ Beauty. And you know, the shades themselves, I you know, I think we've seen all of these shades before. I might pick up a pearly white highlighter, but what really disappoints me is that these are oversized. They have three different shades and four different imprints. So I would have loved to have picked up minis with these imprints and you know have a few, but unfortunately, you know, the oversized ones, I'm never gonna pan it. And I'm not gonna be picking up one of each of these designs, you know, in an oversized. If it were a mini, I probably would have. So if I pick one up, I'll probably pick up the Le Pearl design in the pearly white. 
Um, but I might just pass on all of these because I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Not too happy. I'm more eager to see what Chanel comes out with next year with the, the new team's work actually showing up then. So we also have another thing from uh, Chanel. And this photo is actually posted by fellow YouTuber Cherie Voyage. And, you know, I guess she is redoing her um, her stuff right now. So she has kind of pulled down her content temporarily, but she is coming back from my understanding. So she posted this sneak peek of Chanel fall. So let's take a look at this. So here we actually have four different quads. And I have to say, I'm more intrigued by these, but I'm still not totally blown away. We've got the Peru Baroque, which is interesting to me, and the Peru Crystal, which is interesting to me, which actually reminds me of one of the very old Chanel quads I used to have. I don't think I have it anymore. I can't remember what it's called, but it was from when they had the, were they squares instead of round? I can't remember. It was probably like 10 years ago or something. Um, but that color story looks like it to me. So I might pick up those. Um, the other two, they look gorgeous as well. It's nice to see something a little different. Again, we still have some pinks in here, but um, at least they're kind of spread out a little bit more. And then we have some new items here. So if you can kind of see a little bit of the bottom here of this photo, we have Ombre Premier Libra. We have a loose powder eyeshadow from Chanel. I'm kind of torn on this. I'll probably pick one up to try it, but I'm I'm not sure how much I'm going to like that or not. Uh, it says they're going to retail for $40. I'm not sure if this is U.S. pricing or not. And then we've got some new Rouge Coco Blooms. I was wondering what was going on with that because they have not released new shades since those have come out, really. Um, if they have a cool rosy pink, I'll pick it up, but otherwise I'll probably skip those. And then we've got a couple blush harmony shades. And I have to say there's one that's warm, one that's cool. The, the one that's on the right there, that like burgundy with the, the light pink C's, that's the one that I'm interested in. And we've got two new nail polishes. So I'll probably pick stuff up from here. I think this looks, it's a little bit more exciting than what we've been seeing recently. So I'm happy to see that but I'm still more eager for what we're gonna see next year with the new team. Oh, and one more Dior item here. I really wanted to pick up one of these lipsticks. These are the Dior Premier, uh, Rouge, Rouge Premier uh, lipsticks, and there are 12 different shades, but unfortunately these are gonna only be, be available in France at their flagship location. So it's not something that's gonna be readily available. I think the packaging is gorgeous. I'm not sure what the retail price was, but if it was a reasonable price, I was planning on picking them up. So unfortunately though, they are gonna be exclusive to France's flagship location. So I won't be getting those, but I do think they're gorgeous. If you're in France and you happen to see those, you know, if they're a reasonable price, I'd pick one up because that is really pretty. All right, Tom Ford, we have their new private rose collection. We've got like a cushion and then we've got two new quads and two new lipsticks. And the quads are rose teas and insolent rose. I'm not interested in either. I feel like insolent rose is a name we already have, uh, but it could be one of those quads where it came out with one name and then now it has another name for the, the newer versions. Uh, they did that with a couple of their quads. They released them. It was kind of like if you bought them from this location, you got them with this name. And then if you bought them like a, a couple weeks later, they had a different name, kind of like they changed our mind. So I don't know. I feel like I have an insolent rose. Let me check real quickly. Yep, I have this one in insolent rose. So it doesn't look like it's the same color story unless the photo's just really off. But this palette's okay. Um, it's lighter than I expected. I don't plan on picking it up again. And I'm not sure what formula these are, but honestly, I'm gonna skip both of these. The lipsticks, I actually think they look really pretty, but I'm gonna pass on those as well. Uh, there are just other formulas I prefer over these. These can be, I can't tell if these are the satins or the mattes, but the matte ones I find to be a little bit drying. So I'm planning on passing on those. Let's take a look at Bobbi Brown. So this is Bobbi Brown Fall. I think it actually looks like a gorgeous collection, but I'm not sure how much of it I'm gonna get. So first up, we have this um, Eye and Cheek palette. So this is called the Moonstone Glow Luxe Eye and Cheek palette. It's gorgeous. I really like the eyeshadows here. 
However, I don't know if I'm gonna use that middle shade or not. I can't tell, that might be the, the Quartz Glow highlighter, which I already have, or it's something more yellow. So if it is Quartz Glow, Quartz Glow is not as yellow as it looks in this photo. So it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure, I might get this. If it is Quartz Glow, I'll get it. If it's something more yellow, I'm not gonna get this palette. But moving on, we've got some new uh, shades in the Luxe eyeshadow formula in the Rich Sparkle finish. And uh, definitely 30 Cosmic is going to be one that I'm picking up. I might get the other two, Solar Wind and Incandescent. I don't think I have either of them. I'm not even sure if they're both new. Incandescent sounds like it might not be new, um, but maybe that was something else I'm thinking of. So I'll have to double check those, but definitely Cosmic, my next choice would be Incandescent and then Solar Wind. The Pink Glow Highlight I already have, so I don't need that. And then we've got some shadow sticks. We've got Opal and Moonstone. I believe I have both of those shades already. So I'll be passing on those. And then the Lux Lipstick in 136 Toast It Honey. I think it's gorgeous, but again, I'm gonna stick with some of the other lipsticks I already have. So I'm really more interested in these eyeshadows. And I think this looks like a gorgeous collection. This is supposed to come out July 1st. So definitely planning on getting that very soon. All right, and last up, we have Givenchy Fall. Now, I'm super excited for this. I don't know if there's gonna be more to the fall collection. Honestly, it doesn't really look that fall. It looks more spring-like because it's got these beautiful lavender shades. We have another loose powder blush. This is in 14 Violet Tool. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it. I wish they would bring these to the US. The last blush shade that came out, was it for the holiday, I think? I wasn't able to get it because I just, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have that same problem with this one, but I would love to get it if I can find it. Same thing with the lips. Now we'll probably will get the lips in the US. We Usually we get the lips, but not the loose powder blushes. So I will get whatever from this collection that I can. I'm definitely very interested in all three of these shades, but definitely this shade 24, Roster Lavanda. And also actually the purple grays, I think is gonna be really nice for fall. The Rosewood Glint, the third shade there, I think that's gonna be beautiful as well. Probably not as purpley, um, but yeah, I want all of those. So I wear these um, Givenchy bombs all the time. So I'm really excited for those. And yeah, that's everything here. So I would love to know what you plan on picking up and what interests you. I'm definitely kind of saving my pennies for those clay de po eyeshadows so I can get as many as I can. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share down below in the comments. And thanks so much for all the well wishes with Sadie and everything. You know, the kids just recently got out of school. They've been home with her, so we've had a lot of fun with her and they just started at camp today. So, um, you know, finally have a little bit more time to film and so forth. So uh, yeah, I'll see you again very soon. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.